All right, to build our box, we're going to need to go and get some things. So I went to my local hardware store and I picked up everything you see here for about $40. That price will change depending on what you get. This is probably, you know, the on the higher side of what you need. You can actually eliminate a couple of these things and bring the cost down. But, you know, this setup works really well for me, so this is what I'm going to show you guys. So the actual body of our box is going to be made out of a 4 by 8 foot piece of half an inch thick drywall. Drywall is also known as sheetrock or gypsum board. It's basically two pieces of paper with gypsum powder in it. Now gypsum is non-toxic by itself, but keep in mind that since this is a uh, building material, expect there to be, you know, other things in here that are probably not good to be around, you know, kids and pets. So we're going to be cutting this and you're going to need a knife, any kind of knife will work. I'm basically going to be using this, it's just a, basically a box cutter to do all my cutting. We're going to be cutting and shaping this and that's going to be releasing a lot of dust. So you're going to need a good dust mask and you're also going to need to work in an area that, you know, people won't walk through. So I'm going to be doing this in my garage, which is pretty much my workshop. Nobody comes down here. I'm the only one in here. So, you know, that's it. When we actually get to cutting this, I'll go over safety a little bit more. But that's the first thing you're going to need to get. Then, to actually hold our box together and for insulation, you're going to need some of this. This is a foil tape. This is not foil colored tape. So don't just, you know, get a foil colored tape. This is actually aluminum foil with an adhesive backing. And we're going to be using this to hold the box together and we're going to be using it to insulate the box so it heats more efficiently and you can protect the paper on the drywall. So I'm also going to be using aluminum foil because for you know, all the seams and everything you're pretty much going to be using this whole roll of tape. This is going to save some tape on the larger patches where you don't necessarily need a lot of tape there, you just need something to protect the paper. You could just buy an extra roll of this and just do everything with the tape, but you know that's going to add a little bit of, a little bit more. But it's up to you. So now that we've actually got our box, we're going to go on to the electrical side. I'm no electrician. I, my knowledge of electrical work is very limited. So this is going to be pretty simple. This is probably not the best way to do it. Well, this is what I've been doing and it's been working for me. So you're going to need some porcelain lamp holders. You're going to be needing three of these. And we're going to be putting these inside of the box. So it's important not to get the plastic ones. And we're going to need a wire to wire this all up. I'm just going to be using an indoor extension cord. This is a 16 gauge uh, light duty extension cord. I got the shortest one, so this is six feet, fairly inexpensive, and you know, this will work. So next up, I went ahead and I got some stuff to build a switch. So I've just got a simple on-off switch here, plus a box that's going to go on the side of our heating box, and a faceplate. If you don't want to use these things, you'll save about $5 and you'll just have to, if you want to turn this on, you plug it in, if you want to turn it off, you unplug it or run it through a uh, power strip or something with an on-off switch. But this way, if you choose to go this route, it's going to cost you about 4 to $5 extra. And then you're also going to need your light bulbs. This is going to be your main heat source. I'm using two 250 watt heat lamps plus a 150 watt incandescent. You could get away with just using incandescents and not using the heat bulb, but we'll get into that a little later because depending on, you know, how long you want to wait for this thing to heat up and, you know, just different things like that, you can change the bulbs and this is an opportunity to save some money, but, you know, for what I figured out, these seem, this combination seems to work the best. So, there's that. Now we need to get started building this thing. So we're going to start by uh, laying out our pattern onto here. 
and then we're going to be cutting our drywall to shape or to size. So here we go. Okay, so I've got my two boards here, and the measurements here are really simple. I'm going to put a link to my blog where I'll have a sort of a template with more detailed dimensions on it, but basically what you're going to want to do is measure on each board from the from one of the edges down to 30 inches and then mark a line across. You can see that's that line here and this line here. This board, this top half is going to uh, just be scrap. Extra piece, you can use it for whatever you want. Um, this here are going to become your uh, two side panels, or your top, so two of your side panels, and then these over here are going to become two of your side panels. So what you want to do is, on this board, you want to measure two feet in from the edge. So basically you're cutting this one in half all the way, and you're going to end up with two panels that are 24 by 30 inches, and two panels that are, I believe, 18 by 24 inches. And these two panels are going to become, one's going to be your top, and I've got markings there for where we are going to be putting our top holes, and this is going to be the bottom. These are two of our side panels. And then over here you want to measure from the end 18 inches, 36 inches. So you're basically making two 18 inch wide panels plus a 1 foot or a 12 inch wide panel. These are also going to become side panels and that is going to be the board that we're going to mount our lamps on. Another thing to keep to see here is that you're also going to mark off 3 quarters of an inch off of each end. That's going to allow this to sit on top of one of these panels on the inside. Another thing that we're going to be using those scrap pieces for, we're going to be using those scrap pieces for the lid, so you want to mark those off and also mark them in half. And here I have my markings for where we're going to actually install the lamps, and I'll have more detailed dimensions on there. So now I'm going to go ahead and just start cutting all of these. So here we go. Okay, cutting the boards are pretty straightforward. What you want to do is you want to first start off with a cut that will go all the way across the board that you're working with. So, for right here, I'm going to cut right across here. Really simple. So, you don't need to cut all the way through it, you just need to cut through the top layer of paper. So once you've cut through that, you want to lift the board up like this, and then just sort of kick or apply pressure in the middle, and it'll fold like this. And you just take your knife and then follow right along here, and you're just cutting through the paper. That's all you're doing. Alright, now I have two boards. That's pretty straightforward, you just go ahead and follow your line. So it's really easy to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut out all my panels and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done.
All right, so now that you've cut your four main panels, you want to go ahead and mark a half an inch in and basically draw a line from the top to the bottom on the long edge on each panel. So these are just the four uh, wall panels. The top and the bottom you're not going to do anything to. And we're actually going to be cutting this so that when we put it all together it'll fit really nicely. Now you want to do this on the inside and this white paper is going to be the inside. The brown paper is going to be the outside. Another thing is that you're going to want to, you may, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I would do this. You also want to mark half an inch all around the inside of this board. This is the board that our lights are actually going to attach to. The reason behind that is because we're just going to be taping this onto one of our wall panels. Since we're just taping it by cutting this 45 degree angle out of the sides, It'll sit better and it'll hold better with just the tape. Though you don't need to do this, this is an optional step. So, doing this is pretty straightforward. If you have a saw of some sort, you could use that. I'm just going to be using the knife, it puts up less dust. So, here we go. It was pretty simple, you just Take your top edge here, you take your knife, and you just want to start cutting. And you just want to follow this line. You know, make sure you follow this line that you made and then this outside edge here. You don't want to cut through either. And it's better to take a couple small passes than to take one large pass and overdo it. There's one edge. You can see it's got a nice angle on it now, so that when we line it up with another piece that has an angle, we're going to get a nice corner. And it's going to hold really well, even with just using the aluminum tape. So once you've got that one edge, you just want to flip it over and do the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on all of my panels, and then we'll move on to the next step. Here we go.